Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live on day two of the DataWorks Summit from the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm Lisa Martin. My co-host is George Gilbert. We're very excited to be joined by our next guest from DataTorrent. We've got Nathan Trueblood, VPF product. Hey, Nathan. Hi. And the man who gave me my start in high tech 12 years ago, the SVP of marketing, Jeff Betancourt. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. Great to see you, too. So, tell us about the the SVP of marketing. Who is DataTorrent? What do you guys do? What are you doing in the big data space? So DataTorrent is all about real-time streaming. So it's really taking a, a different paradigm to handling information as it comes from the different sources that are out there. So you think big IoT, you think all of these different new things that are creating pieces of information. It could be humans, it could be uh, machines, sensors, whatever it is and taking that in real time rather than putting it traditionally just in a data lake and then later on coming back and investigating the data that you stored. So we started about 2011, um, started by some of the early um, founders, uh, people that, that started Yahoo, and uh, we're pioneers in Hadoop and Hadoop Yarn. This is one of the, one of the guys here too. And so uh, we're all about building real-time analytics for our customers, making sure that they can get business decisions done in real time as the information is created. And uh, you know, Nathan will talk a little bit about what we're doing on the application side of it as well, building these hardened application pipelines for our customers to assist them to get started faster. Excellent. So, so all right, let's turn to those uh, real-time applications. Um, my familiarity with uh, Data Torrent started probably about five years ago, I think, where it was, um, I think, positioned as I don't think there was much talk about streaming, but it was like, you know, real time, real time data feeds. Um, but now we have, I mean, now streaming is sort of center of gravity and is um, um, sort of a peer to big data. Yeah. So, so tell us, tell us how someone who's building apps should oh think about the two uh, solution categories, how they complement each other, and and. Uh, what sort of applications we can build now that we couldn't build before. So, I think the way I look at it is not so much uh, two different things that complement each other, but streaming analytics and real-time data processing and analytics is really just a natural progression of where big data has been going. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we were at Yahoo and running Hadoop at scale, you know, first thing on the scene was just simply the ability to produce insight out of a massive amount of data. But then there was this constant pressure well, okay, now we've produced that insight in a day, can you do it in an hour? You know, can you do it in half an hour? Um, and particularly at Yahoo at the time that Amol, our, our uh, CTO and I were there, there was this constant pressure of can you produce insight from a huge volume of data more quickly? And so we kind of saw at that time two, two major trends. One was that we were kind of reaching the limit of where you could go with the Hadoop and batch architecture at that time, and so a new approach was required, and that's what really was sort of the foundation of the Apache Apex project and of DataTorrent, the company, was simply realizing that a, a new approach was required because the more that uh, Yahoo or other businesses can take information from the world around them and take action on that as quickly as possible, that's going to make you more competitive. So that was, so I look at streaming as really just a natural progression um, where now it's possible to you know, get insight and take action on data as close to the time of data creation as possible. And if you can do that, then you're going to be competitive. And so we see this cutting across a whole bunch of different verticals. So that's, you know, so that's kind of how I look at the sort of, it's not so much complementary as this is a trend in where big data is going. Now, what, you know, the kinds of things that weren't possible you know, uh, before this are you know, the kinds of applications where now you can take insight, whether it's from IoT or from sensors or from retail, all the things that are going on, whereas before you would land this in a data lake, do a bunch of analysis, produce some insight, maybe change your behavior, but ultimately you weren't being as responsive as you could be to customers. So now what we're seeing, why I think the center of mass has moved into real time and streaming is that now it's possible to uh, you know, give a customer an offer the second they walk into a store. 
um, based on what you know about them and their history. This was always something that the, the internet properties were trying to move towards, but now we see that same technology is being made available across a whole bunch of different verticals and a whole bunch of different industries. And that's why you know, when you look at, at Apex and Data Torrent, we're involved you know, not only in things like ad tech, but in you know, industrial automation you know, and IOT, and we're involved in you know, uh, retail and customer 360, because in every one of these cases, you know, insurance, finance, security, and fraud prevention, um, it's a huge competitive advantage if you can get insight and make a decision close to the time of data creation. So, you know, so I think that's really where the shift is coming from. Um, and then the other thing I would mention here is that a big thrust of our company um, and of Apache Apex, and this is, so, so we saw streaming was going to be something that everyone was going to need. The other thing we saw from our experience at Yahoo was that uh, you know, really getting something to work at a POC level, showing that something is possible with streaming analytics, is really only a small part of the problem. Being able to take and put something into production at scale and run a business on it is a much bigger part of the problem. And so we put into both the Apache Apex project as well as into our, our product uh, the ability to not only get inside out of you know, data in motion, but to be able to put that in production at scale. And so that's why you know, we've had quite a few customers who have put our product in production at scale and have been running that way, you know, in some cases, for, for years. And so that's another sort of uh, key area where we're, we're forging a path, which is it's not enough to do a POC and show that something is possible. You have to be able to run a business on it. So talk to us about where Data Torrent sits within a modern data architecture. You guys are kind of playing in a couple of, uh, integrated in a couple of different areas. Walk us through what that looks like. So in terms of a modern data architecture, I mean, part of it is, is what I just covered in that we're moving sort of from, from a batch to a streaming world where the notion of batch is not going away, but now when you have something, uh, you know, a streaming application, that's something that's running all the time 24-7. There's no concept of batch. Batch is really more the concept of how you are processing data through that streaming application. So what we're seeing in the modern data architecture is that uh, you know, typically you have people taking data extracting it and eventually loading it into some kind of a data lake, right? What we're doing is shifting left of the data lake. You know, analyze that information when it's created, produce insight from it, take action on it, and then yes, land it in the data lake. But once you land it in the data lake, now the, the purposes of what you're doing with that data have shifted. You know, we're producing insight, taking action to the left of the data lake, and then you use that data lake to do things like train your, uh, you know, your uh, machine learning model that we're then going to use to the left of the data lake. Use the data lake to do slicing and dicing of your data to better understand what kinds of campaigns you want to run, things like that, but ultimately you're using the real time portion of this to be able to take those campaigns and then measure the impacts you're having on your customers in real time. So, okay, because that, that was going to be my follow-up question, which is there does seem to be a role for the uh, historical repository for richer context. Yep. Absolutely. And you, you're acknowledging that. Like yes. The, the, the low latency analytics happen first, then store up you know, for uh, a richer model you know, later. Correct. Um, so there are a couple things then that, that seem to be like uh, requirements, next steps, which is if you're doing um, the modeling, the research model in the cloud, um, how do you orchestrate its distribution towards the sources of the real-time data? Um, and in other words, if you do training up in the cloud where you have you know, the, the biggest data and the richest data, um, is data torrent or Apex part of the process of orchestrating the distribution and coherence of the models that should be at the edge or closer to where the data sources are? So I guess there's a couple of different uh, ways we can think about that problem. So you know, we have customers today who are essentially you know, providing into the streaming analytics application you know, the models that have been trained on the data from the data lake. 
um, and part of the approach we take in Apex and Data Torrent is that uh, you can reload and be changing those models all of the time. And so our architecture is such that it's fault tolerant, it stays up all the time, so you can actually change the application and evolve it over time. So we have customers that are reloading models uh, on a regular basis, and so that's, whether it's machine learning or even just a rules engine, you know, we're able to reload that on a regular basis. The other part of your question, if I understood you, was really about the distribution of data. Um, and and, and you know, distribution of models wow. and the distribution of data and where you train that. And yeah. again, um, I think that you're going to have data in the cloud, you're going to have data on-premises, you're going to have data at the edge. Again, what we allow customers to do is to be able to uh, take and integrate that data, make decisions on it, regardless of kind of where, where it lives. So we'll see streaming applications that get deployed into the cloud, but they may be synchronizing some portion of the data to on-premises or, or vice versa. So you know, certainly we can orchestrate all of that as part of a, an overall streaming application. I wanted to ask Jeff now, give us a cross section of your, your customers. You've got customers ranging from small businesses to Fortune 10. Yep. Give us some, some kind of use cases that really jump out at you that really showcase the great potential that data so tour if you gives. Think about, if you think about the heritage of our company coming out of the found, you know, early guys that were in Yahoo, ad tech is obviously one that we've, we hit hard and, and, and it's something we know how to do really, really well. So ad tech is one of those things where there's constantly changing. So you can take that same model and say, if I'm looking at ad tech and saying, if I applied that to a distribution of products in a manufacturing facility, it's kind of all the same type of activities, right? I'm managing a lot of inventory. I'm trying to get that inventory to the right place at the right time, and I'm trying to fill that aspect of it. So that's kind of the, where we kind of started. But we've got customers in the financial sector, right, that are really looking at instantaneous type of, uh, of transactions that are happening, and then how do you apply knowledge and information to that while you're bringing that source data in so that you can make decisions. Some of those decisions have people involved with them and some of them are just machine based, right? So you take the people equation out. Um, we kind of have this, uh, <laughs> this funny thing that Guy Churchward, our CEO, talks about called the do, do loop. And it's kind of the do loop is where the people come in. And how do we remove people out of that do loop and really make it easier for, for companies to act, prevent. So then if you take that aspect of it, you, we've got um, companies like um, in the publishing space, we've got companies in the IoT space, so they're doing energy management and stuff like that. So we go from very you know, medium-sized customers all the way up to very, very large enterprises. They're so, really turning a variety yeah. of industries into yeah. tech companies yeah. because they have to be these days. Right. Well, and, right. and one other thing I would mention there, which is important, uh, especially as we look at big data and a lot of customer concern about complexity, you know, I mentioned earlier the challenge of not just coming up with an idea, but being able to put that into production. So one of the area, other big areas of focus for Data Torrent as a company is that um, not only have we developed you know, a platform for streaming analytics and applications, um, but we're starting to deliver applications that you can download and run on our platform that deliver an outcome to a customer immediately. So, uh, you know, increasingly as we see in different verticals, different applications, then we turn those into applications we can make available to all of our customers that solve business problems immediately. One of the challenges for a long time in IT is simply uh, how do you eliminate complexity? And there's no getting away from the fact that this is big data and it's complex systems, but to drive mass adoption, we're, we're focused on how can we deliver outcomes for our customers as quickly as possible, and the way to do that is by making applications available across all these different verticals. Well you guys, this has been so educational. We wish you guys continued success here. Um, it sounds like you're really being quite disruptive in and of yourselves. So if you haven't heard of them, datatorrent.com, check them out. Nathan, Jeff, thanks so much for giving us your time this afternoon. Thank you. Great, thanks for the we opportunity. We look forward to having you back. You've been watching theCUBE live for day two of the Data Works Summit from the heart of Silicon Valley. For my co-host George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. Stick around, we'll be right back.